After seeing just how well the Ryzen 5800X3D still performs against the latest and greatest CPUs, would you say it's as quote unquote legendary as great CPUs like the Q6600, i7-920 and i7-2600K? Considering just how much longer the CPU has extended the lifespan of the AM4 platform is astonishing and probably deserves a special place in history as a result. Um, I'm going to go on the record here and say I think the 5800X3D is um, uh, is one of the best CPU releases ever. Um, and just the whole philosophy behind it, I think, is it's extraordinary. Because we had a situation um, when Intel had a monopoly effectively on CPUs where um, you would have a, a motherboard, therefore a platform that would last for like, you know, two generations and then you'd move on to the next platform and so on and so forth. And yeah. AMD could have just stuck with that sort of model. Obviously, they extended it a bit with um, uh, AM4, mm -hmm. um, but there came a point where they could have transitioned across to AM5 and left AM4 behind forever. But instead, they produced the 5800X3D. And those benchmarks, I mean, there are some games where it does lag behind. It's not like a be-all and end-all. But it's still up there. It's still doing extremely well. And as we talked about earlier, you know, there's a lot of people out there with lower-end Ryzen chips on the AM4 platform. And we've got this kind of perfect storm now where... Um, you don't even have to have the 5800X3D. The 5700X3D is almost as fast. Mm -hmm. And um, DDR4 memory, I mean, obviously there's there's variable pricing changes all the time. But, you know, you can pick up good memory at a, a very low price now. So, you know, basically what's happened there is that a platform that came out, I think, in 2017 is still viable, still produces great results uh, in 2024, which is, I think, astonishing. And I think AMD deserve kudos for that. And to the point where, you know, the X3D concepts in general is actually now causing them problems with their new releases. <laughs> um, but, you know, in terms of being consumer friendly, that's fantastic. Uh, what I will say, though, the only sort of caveat to that is that um, uh, up until the release of 5800X3D, um, there was a problem with BIOS updates for AMD, sorry, for AM4 boards, whereby, you know, some boards were not getting support for the latest AM4 chips. And a lot of reasons were put forward for that. But suddenly, when Intel became a lot more competitive with uh, Alder Lake 12th Gen Core, those those issues disappeared and BIOS has appeared for virtually every AM4 That's board funny. that allowed you to use <laughs> everything up to the 5800X3D. So, it, you know, you still require competition there. But, you know, I do think that the 5800X3D and AM4 in general is just, uh, quote unquote, legendary. Um, Alex? I would say it's a, a legendary CPU up there with the greats. Um, I only want to give out a technical difference regarding the ones that were listed is the things that made the 2600K, the i7-920, as well as the Q6600, as, rel as well as like the old Celeron, was the, the yep. overclockability. And I think everyone really remembers that, that you could get like 40 to <laughs> like 40% more performance almost on some of these chips versus stock. Uh, frequency just yes. by bumping certain things really simply and they were already so usually um power efficient that it was fine and i think that was that was just the most amazing part back then where the average user could just load up their motherboard bios and just really get incredible lots more performance uh, out of the box. And I thought that was great. Uh, that's different now. And that's the only technical difference I wanted to mention because now overclocking is purely automatic for the most part. Yeah. It seems to be more power related. Yes. Um, yeah. Which opens the door to higher sustained frequency. Um, Oliver. Yes. I mean, I think it's a great processor. It's very efficient. It's competitive with processors that are much more advanced in terms of their process node, in terms of their nominal architecture. <laughs> it made a great innovation in terms of CPU configuration that hasn't today been matched by 
the competition. Uh, and I think critically, you know, the innovation of the Vcache enabled it to overcome some of the limitations of the AM4 platform, like the slow memory speeds that you tended to see with DDR4, because especially with those older Ryzen processors, they tended to be quite constrained or at least try, kind of scaled a lot with memory speed. Yep. And in this case, you were getting a tool to overcome that to quite a substantial degree and make the processor less dependent on memory speed, which I think is um, quite a quite a critical innovation. The only thing that would really come up against it in my mind is that it's a great gaming processor. It's not as good of yeah. a multi-purpose processor because it does have more limited clock rates relative to its eight core contemporaries uh, from Zen 3. Obviously, it's not quite up to that same level in terms of clock speed. Not going to give you the best multi-purpose, multi-workload performance. Still pretty good because it still is an eight core Zen 3 at reasonable clock rates but it's like not going to light the world on fire in Cinebench if that's your concern. So that's the only, that's the only caveat, but it's a fantastic gaming processor and it's absolutely a, a just a, a great chip. I just love the whole thought process that must have created the, the, the X3D line where, you know, obviously somebody <laughs> uh, did a deep dive into how game engines work and why uh, your CPU limited and thought, this isn't actually down to the CPU at all. It's just our cache isn't big enough. Let's let's put this other, <laughs> let's add to the cache hierarchy with this massive fast memory that we'll just lump on top of it. Job done. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, yeah, it is fantastic. But um, as you say, Oliver, it does mean that its, its utility is basically limited to gaming only. But, you know, that's kind of what we're here for. Uh, and I do think it is a, a fantastic product. The concept, as I'll, I'll say it again, 2017 board is still great today, uh, is, is, is laudable. Obviously, there have been other in innovations, though, you know, PCIe 4 happened. So, you know, but then again, there are um, AM4 boards, the later ones had uh, PCIe Gen 4. Right. Uh, yeah.